Greetings, friends and followers. This is Nurses Talking. I am Del Barzi. As always, if you like what you see and hear, subscribe, leave a comment, let us know what you think. Here on Nurses Talking, we speak to nurses anywhere in the world at any stage in their nursing career from students through retirees and anywhere in between. And so today I'm very pleased to welcome Unisa Michelle Fisher, who is a family nurse practitioner certified by the American Association of Nurse Practitioners and licensed by the states of Texas and Arizona to provide family-centered healthcare to patients of all ages. She believes in addressing the mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of each person to reverse physical illness, bringing healing to the mind, body, and spirit. Onisa is a wife, mother, author, mentor, and entrepreneur. She's a strong advocate for patients and has a special place in her heart for those living with special needs. Anissa has been awarded the 2019 Difference Maker Award from Dominique Cares, which is a nonprofit, the 2018 Advanced Practice Nurse Practitioner Award, Advanced Practice Nurse Award from Black Nurses Rock, and she's a community educator for the Alzheimer's Association and an ambassador for the American Heart Association. She's a former ambassador for the American Sexual Health Association. And she says that her philosophy is and always will be to treat people the way you want to be treated and to find beauty in everything. So welcome, 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 Anissa. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. And I want to know from people when I speak to nurses, I always want to know the first thing why? Why are you a nurse? Well, I didn't choose nursing. Nursing chose me. So, because, <laughs> um, you know, I never, when I went to school, I wanted to be a computer programmer. You know, I wanted to um, cause computers to do whatever I wanted them to do and make a lot of money doing it. So um, back when I was in college, I ended up having to take anatomy and physiology as a uh, science because I didn't find any interest in the other ones that they had available at the time. So I just took anatomy and physiology, not really knowing what it was about or where it was going to lead me, but it was just like, I was set up. <laughs> I was set up to take anatomy and physiology when it was not a, a required course for me at that time, mm -hmm. because at that time my major was business, you know, mm -hmm. so, but I needed a science, so I did that. Mm -hmm. But um, I have um, my two to my two oldest sons. My oldest son is special needs, which is why I have a, a special place in my heart for those with special needs. But he actually died in my arms when he was four years old, but we got him back. And it was at that point that I said, I need to figure out what I want to do to, that will be an asset to him. So at that point, I went and became a CNA, not, not a nurse, but a CNA because I didn't know what CNA was, but I knew it was going to be something that was going to help him. And that was my whole goal. Yeah. And okay. it was my grandmother who said to me, oh, you're going to make a nurse after a while because, you know, the older generation, that's how they speak. Yeah. Uh, I said, Grandma, I don't want to be no nurse. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and she was like, oh, yeah, you'll make a good one. You can do it. And it still was never something that was on my radar. And uh, when I just decided as my son kept um, having health issues, I said, I still needed to do something that was going to help him. And so the next step from a CNA was a nurse. So I said, well, I'm going to throw my, throw my line out here. It wasn't something that I just really, you know, was, was attracted to mm -hmm. or that I sought out to be, but I said, let me just, let me just do it and see what happens. And I put it in two schools. One was an a, uh, ADN program. Another one was a BSN program. And so, yeah, here I am. <laughs> here I am, years later, you know, 17 years later, and I'm still doing it. Right? <laughs> so, 17 years later, and by the sound of it, doing a lot of it. Yes, a lot of it, a lot of it. You know, you just, well, I, I, I remember being four years old and having a dog that I took care of like a little baby and then I remember being around 12 and my grandmother was a home health aide and I'm just went to go and, and help her you know it was just a setup all the way here I am four years old 
and outside in the cold with this dog while my mom is in there sleeping. I'm talking about literally feeding him with a bottle. And then 12 years old, just, hey, grandma, I'm going to go with you. You know, <laughs> going into people's home and helping clean up and helping them out, you know, because they were elderly and sickly. And then not knowing that, yeah, God did this. I didn't do it. <laughs> Had nothing to do with me, me and my desire to do it. <laughs> I, you know, I, I agree with you that Nelson chose uh, choose us, but I just love how you say it was a setup. <laughs> it was a setup. It was a setup from the beginning. And and then with, with the people with special needs, you know, there was a young man, and I'll never forget him, um, that was at college, and he was in a wheelchair, and he, he was scooting around this campus and everything. You know, people mistreated him and bullied him and stuff, and I was the one that was stepping in front of him, talking about, all right, leave him alone, yeah, yeah. you know. And I was the one that was always going to get his tray and stuff. If I see him in the cafeteria and, and taking it out for him and cleaning up behind, I was that person. So again, set up <laughs> and set up for, you know, for me to have my own child with special needs and have the heart for them and be able yeah. to do it yeah. um, without looking at it as a uh, burden, but more of an opportunity and a blessing because God chose me Indeed. to do it. Indeed, the universe is saying, how many times do I have to show you this is where I want you to go? I'm you like, know? man. <laughs> <laughs> You're just dragging me. You know, some people he had to drag, drag with a chain and others with a crane. He had a whole yeah. crane for me. Yeah. So. <laughs> but those experiences served you well. Yes, it, it has yeah. made me made me be, you know, who I am today, actually. And this is yeah. my passion. This is what I do. I'll do this voluntarily, you know. <laughs> So it is what it is. He did it. He did it. So having 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 been set up to go into nursing, what what kind of challenges you found when you actually got there? Though, mm -hmm. even though you you know you had your son and you would work to the CNA, and but becoming a nurse, what kind of challenges were there for you? Well, for me, my my main main challenge was trying to get through nursing school. Um, as a single parent, mm. working 10 to 6 at night as a nurse aide, going to school 8 to 12, trying to find some sleep somewhere in between and still being a mom to my sons, yeah. you know, so the challenge for me was just getting there. And once I got there, you know, once I got into nursing, the next challenge for me was earning the respect of the doctors and the other uh, seasoned nurses. Because it is true what they say when they say nurses eat their young. And I've had, to, I've had to stand up for myself on many occasions and let them know what we're not going to do is be disrespectful to each other. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to be a team, whether mm -hmm. you like it or not. <laughs> you know, but what we're not going to do is be ugly to each other when we are here for the same goal and that's our patient. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I hear so much of that. Well, not just that I hear so much. I know, I know it, mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. it. Um, and as, as I was saying to someone yesterday, and I really have to go back and see where I read it, someone um, is talking about trying to get rid of the stigma of nurses eating their young and trying to turn it around to say nurses feed their young. Yes. And I wish that we can get there. Yes. Hopefully that one day we will be able to get there. Yeah. But a lot of the, uh, unfortunately, a lot of the nurses get to their arrive <laughs> and, and forget forget the role that they took to get there and how someone else made it difficult for them. So if someone else made it difficult for you, why would you allow yourself to make it difficult for somebody else? I'm not saying spoon feed them, but guide them and be a mentor mm -hmm. to them mm -hmm. on their journey to try to, so that everybody can be again on the same page and make them the best they can be for the patients after your days are over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the job is hard enough without that. Yes, yes. So what, what kind of areas did you, what did you gravitate to first? Well, I went to cardiac first, mainly because I hated cardiac in school. I hated it. I hated it. I was intimidated by it more than anything because it was like, I just couldn't, it just was not clicking for me. But because I'm, I'm a competitor. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> I'm, I'm very competitive but and I don't allow things that I think can beat me to beat me mm -hmm. so it's like when a person tells you you can't do something 
my response is always watch me <laughs> and so the it was the same with with cardiac for me is that it was kicking my butt in school it did and i hated it with a passion but i refused to let something like that limit me on my knowledge and my experience so i went into cardiac Thing. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me not to tell you what you can't do, okay? <laughs> Listen, I've, I've heard it so many times, Miss Dale, um, especially after I had my son so young and he yeah. was special needs. Yeah. You know, I've heard it so many times what I wasn't going to be able to do, what I could not accomplish, what mm -hmm. I cannot accomplish right now. Yeah. You know, after my son is 25, going to be 26 years old, and I've done it this whole time, me and the Lord. Yeah. So it's, it's for me, I won't please tell me what I can't do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ma'am. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> you are an author. I am. Put yes, ma'am. I have two books um, out. Um, one of them came out, I want to say, in 20. 18 2019 and the other one came out in 2020 so the first one is called chosen okay look at that and it's spelled c-h-o-z-e-n um the title came from you know god choosing me to be where i am and choosing the people as a whole to be exactly where they are they're always in the right place at the right time no matter what the situation looks like uh -huh, because uh -huh. god chose that specific place and time for you to be in that moment, right? So it's it's came from being chosen by God to do everything that I do, including caring for my ch my children and my family, and caring for other people, and being a mentor in every other position that He's put me in, and the Zen being the peace that has been given at times when it is chaos uh -huh. in the middle of everything that was going on. So that's where the chosen came from. Um, the second one was called Chosen to Heal. So. And it's a 365-day uh, devotional. Okay. So, um, and it gives a spiritual guidance through your day just to get you started and remind you that God is always at the forefront and remind you to start your day with God first and your day should be okay. And both of them were anthologies and it was a combina combination of myself and several other beautiful nurses that combined our talents together to, to, to uh, bring that masterpiece together, both of them. Awesome, 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 awesome. That sounds fantastic. That sounds fantastic. And then you're an entrepreneur. Yes, ma'am. So I have been for a while. I started off with a drug testing company and um, I did that for a little while, but because I was working for somebody else too, it didn't leave a lot of time for me to actually get it exactly where I wanted it to go. Um, the second one was um, called Healing Hearts. Healing Heart CPR. So I still do that. Um, and I can do virtual classes and I do face-to-face -face classes where I teach BLS and first aid and safety to both um, providers and non-providers. And then now I'm in the I'm in the birthing stage of um, two others. <laughs> I'm in labor. I'm in labor right now. <laughs> out two others and both of them were ultimately one day Lord's will I uh, have my own uh, platform as far as telehealth as well as my own clinic because that's ultimately where I want to go in order for me to be a better asset to the community my family and give me my own time back so I'm working I'm working here I'm working. <laughs> But if you're in labor, my dear, hurry up and labor. bear down and, you know, get the get the space yes, born. <laughs> yes. And of course, you know, in labor, you got some pains. I know. But I am. And, and look, and my husband is, is right next to me, holding my hand, telling me to push, baby, push. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's really, that's really awesome. But, you know, one of the questions I was really going to ask you is what is your what is your greatest achievement so far? I think I have to have another conversation with you later. Yeah. <laughs> so ask that question because there was stuff coming up, right? Yeah. Well, my greatest achievement so far is just being an advocate for my patients. I think that's my greatest achievement is being a person that people are willing to invest their time, money and energy into for them to trust, especially my patients. And for them to actually seek out when it comes time for their health care. You know, so I think my greatest achievement is earning the trust of my, of my community 
to know that I'm going to give them the best care I possibly can um, under my skill set and treat them like they are human beings. Not whether or not whether you have a lot of money or insurance or otherwise, but because you deserve as a human being to be treated as such with yeah. the respect and with the quality of care that you need. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, second commandment. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, second commandment. It, it has been my mantra. <laughs> 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 so yes, apart from your apart from your business though mm -hmm. um what would you like to see happen in nursing with nurses and in nursing i would like to see what like you were saying i would like to see that stigma of nurses eating their young turn to nurses feeding their young i would, I would like to just see that the nurses actually feed their young and i would like to see um, the respect level for nurses all the way across the board to be equal, um, no matter who, what background they come from eth eth ethnically and what background they come from social, social economically, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, that's one of the main things I would like to see in healthcare and for our nurses is to love on each other, mentor each other and guide each other toward the greatness that we are. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Because I really, really think that um, many of us don't even know what we bring to the table. Right. And we're not as we're not as um, uh, emotionally strong as as we could be or should be, um, yes. because we don't even really know our strength and and, and who we are. Right. Um, and to have that support system in your nurse sisters or brothers, yeah, you know that profession as a whole would mm -hmm. be the most beautiful thing to see. And you would watch our healthcare system actually flourish as opposed to go down the toilet like it's doing right now. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. And that's really, that's really <clears throat> one of the goals of this is that I really want nurses to see nurses as, see us, you know, in different arenas and, and realize that we bring so much and that we're, that we're everywhere. And, yes. and, and we, we're so strong and so powerful that we, we can. And realize that it's, it's about collaboration as opposed to competition. Yeah. And everybody has things to bring to the table and everybody has their own table to bring. Great. Now, can you imagine the vastness of healthcare and how amazing it would be if everybody brought what they had on their table yeah. and put it next to their sister or brother's table? Yes. How beautiful that would be because yeah. everyone has their own skill set that they are actually masters at mm -hmm. and if you put all of those together mm -hmm. yeah we would be the most powerful source in healthcare yeah. we already are we, yeah we just don't know because we're too busy competing yeah as opposed to collaborating with each other yeah exactly exactly yeah. exactly and i'm really hoping that we can get there yes. <clears throat> so one of the things though that i am um, you know, I, I feel very strongly when we're talking about all of this and what um, nurses are and what we bring to the table and stuff like that. I feel very strongly, though, that one of the reasons we're seeing all of this dis-ease and all of this burnout and all of this, even all of this competition is that we don't take care of ourselves. We don't. And I feel that that has a lot to do with the way we behave with each other and in general. So my question always is, what does self-care mean to you? Well, self-care is never selfish. And that's something that everybody has to mm -hmm. get through their head. Mm -hmm. When you take time away to steal away, whether it's still away for a quiet moment daily, and it's not something you do once a week or once a month or once a year. It's something that you do daily mm -hmm. in order for you to keep going. So self-care looks like a quiet cup of tea when everybody's asleep or a bath with candles and your gospel or whatever your music preference is mm -hmm. or exercise for me that's my self-care that's every morning five six days a week that most self-care every morning mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so that's self-care for me and a lot of people think it has to be a vacation and things like that it's something so simple as it's warm outside it's nice weather outside you pull your chair outside and you just sit there in the stillness of, of your thoughts and reconnecting with nature and reconnecting with God 
and allow him to clarify some things that may be bothering you. So self-care is not just going to the gym or going on vacation and things like that. It's just taking that time for something just for you yeah. away from everybody else. Yeah. And it's so important to do that in order for you not to get burned out, not only in your nursing, but not to get burned out in life yeah. as a whole. In general, yes. Yeah. Yes. In general, yes. And you, you know, you started by mentioning my my self-care thing. It's that first cup of tea in the morning when, you know, I don't want to be disturbed. Just mm -hmm. I only need a half an hour. Sometimes not even that. Right. Just, like, just a little bit of quiet time for me at the mm -hmm. beginning of my day with my cup of tea. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Yeah. So what advice would you give to somebody who wants to be a nurse? Because what I'm hearing is that you're um, yes, you had you mentioned your grandmother, by the way, which um, I think I see her in you right now. But, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it could not have been easy. Oh, no. So what advice would you give to somebody who wants to be an ass? My advice to someone would be to have a made up mind and have your heart healed and right. Because nursing is it's an act of your heart. It's not always your mind. It's mm -hmm. an act of your heart. Mm -hmm. And because the education is rigorous, you cannot go in it for finance. Mm -hmm. You have to go in it because you were chosen to do so. Mm -hmm. It's something that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And you have an attitude of gratitude because it could be you on the other side of that bed. Yes. And you have to go into it with the mindset is I want to help people. My primary goal is to help my community, to be an asset to someone else, to be the light that they see, because sometimes you are the only light that they see that day. Exactly, exactly. That's it, that's all they have. You are the only glimmer of hope mm -hmm. and you have to be willing and able to do that. And you cannot come in there with the wrong attitude. Yeah. So. You have to go in it with your mind and your heart together and with the determination that no matter what happens, no matter how hard it gets, that I will not quit because someone needs to see me. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Someone needs to see it. Someone needs to see you. Uh, and it makes all the difference. It makes yeah. all the difference how you show up. So I'm asking, if you had to describe the most essential quality of a nurse in just one word, what would that word be? Compassion. 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 Okay, compassion. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you have, if you don't have that, you there's no way for you to care for someone in their worst stage. Because yeah. the people that you are caring for are in their one of the lowest points of their lives, and they're depending on you to treat them with the utmost respect and with compassion to show them that it's going to be okay. And I'm here with you by your side to help you through the worst moment of your life. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, that word, when I ask this is compassion comes up a lot. Really? Um, <laughs> it does. It does. It comes up a lot. And, and I think we, when we say it, um, and we understand that we've got to have compassion for the people that we take care of. I think sometimes we forget that we can, we need to have compassion for ourselves. We need to have compassion for our, our colleagues who talked about, you know, working collaboratively. Mm -hmm. uh, we also mentioned that it could be you in that bed. It could be you. And that is something that um, sometimes I think we don't realize until we're faced at some point in your nursing career, at some point, if you are a nurse, it hits you that you're actually facing your own mortality. Um, and, and that is, can be very unsettling. Yes. That can be very unsettling to, you know, to some people. And if you never come to terms with that, there is no way to actually have some compassion for yourself. Whether that's right. Therefore, extend it to, to others. And sometimes I wonder if that's not one of, not one of the reasons why we can be so abrasive at times. You know, my aggression is only when my doctors are not listening and I'm really trying to advocate for my patient mm -hmm. or the patient doesn't take ownership for their own health mm -hmm. and I can want it. And I had to come to a place in my career where only thing you can do is what you can do. 
and not bring it home with me because yeah. I, I was because I want you to be healthy so bad. Yeah. 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 To where, but I can't will it for you. You know, and I had to I had to come to grips with that for myself. And I'm the same way now with my fitness and stuff like that. I want for everybody to be the best version of themselves. But I can only, my grandmother would say, you can lead a horse to water. You cannot make them yeah. drink. That's right. So I can only provide you with my recommendations, even as a nurse practitioner. I will provide you, and I've t told patients this, I, the rec my recommendation is this. Now, when you leave here, what you do with the information that I gave you is going to be on you. So you have to be willing yeah. to do what it takes for your health. Exactly. And we have to be willing to accept the fact that all of our patients and our colleagues and anyone that we come in contact with is not going to do exactly what we ask them to do yeah. because they may not, they may or may not see the value in it. Yeah. They may or may not um, see, take it seriously, you know, or they may not, just not want to. They may not want to. And we have to be okay with them not wanting to, uh -huh. no matter how bad we <laughs> want <it> for them. <laughs> and if you are truly a nurse at heart, you will want it for them. Yes, you so will. Bad to where sometimes you'll take it home with you, but you have to learn over, and it took me some time to let them make the decisions. You provide the information, you allow them to make the decision that they feel is best for them and not try to control them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that 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 is something that I think it takes a while to come to terms with, that you just you just can't make them do it. You cannot make That's them right. do it. That's um, right. And so, you know, you do the best, the very, very best that you can. You give them the best information that you can. Um, and, you know, the, the rest is, is, is up to them. The rest yeah. Yes. And I like to say, like, you're eating a rib. I have to tell, break it down to your patients. It's just like you're eating a rib. You're going to eat the meat. You're going to throw away the bones. Yeah. And do that with information as well. You pick out what you feel is important. that's going to nourish you. Mm -hmm. And you throw away the parts that you don't. That's very, very true. That's very, very true. I tell people that's why God gave us free will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> true. True. Even though I want to control it. <laughs> you know <laughs> so I let it go <laughs> I let it go Onisa I, I don't know how to thank you for this this is this has been such a, an uplifting and enlightening conversation wow. I, I really do appreciate you coming and, and doing this and taking the time to do it I really appreciate it thank you so much you're most welcome I just appreciate you giving me the opportunity to do so you're welcome